Hello everyone, Jake Cub here. Welcome back to another The Making Of. Uh, this is for the Tuna UHC intro, and today I'm going to be going over how I made this intro. Um, it was fairly basic, there isn't really that much to it, so this is going to be relatively short compared to the other ones. Um, but I think the big thing that you'll want to take away from this one is my thought process on how to make an intro without renders because making intros with renders is kind of the norms or art um, but I didn't really have that option for this round so I had to get a little bit creative and work with the limited options that I had so let's get started um, for starters there's just a simple fade in on all these and let's talk about the background first so for the background we have I will turn off this top layer we have just a background that I found off of YouTube that actually looked pretty sick um, it had the sparks coming in from the left, and that's just what the background looked like normally. Um, the second part of the background is this layer right here, which is using the blend mode of soft light. Um, so if I set it to normal, that's what it is. It's really just a heavy cloud layer. But what soft light does is it blends it with the background, and it really adds that kind of darker dynamic that I was shooting for here. So, now that we have the background dealt with, there's a little bit more with the background later on, but I'll go over that. Um, next up, we have the players. So, Lightning and Jinko didn't get renders for this round, so my first thought was, well, how can I do this? Well, you can get uh, actors in-game, similar to how the Pathfinder 10 intro was done, or... Um, you could just do straight text. Uh, there was an RR Clash intro that did that. Um, but what I went for was the player faces, um, which I just found online through a website. And I had them half on the screen. I feel like if I had them fully on the screen, it would have been... I, I don't think the style would have been clear. Um, I think having the full face on screen... Um, I don't think it would have worked for a situation like this. I think the aesthetic of showing half the face worked out better. Um, but who knows? Um, like, what I can do, I can put this all the way over here. I'll set that. That's what it would look like. I, I just don't think that would look nearly as well compared to this. I think the half face looked much better. So that's the players, and what simply happens is there's no animation on it. It literally just fades in and fades out for the player heads. Um, for the text, we have um, it. the players alternate from side to side. Uh, as you'll notice, Q is going to appear on the right side, C money is on the left side. So the text is also going to alternate, so this first piece of text comes in from the top. We have a directional blur going from 100 to 0. Um, going down and the position also changes so it goes down with it and then it just keeps going down and it fades out now you'll notice the split right here uh, if you watch the intro you'll know that there is a beat on this cut and in order to make this intro a little bit more creative and less bland I put a little distortion effect on all of these so uh, for here you'll see there is a turbulent displace turbulent smoother there's nine different options I use all nine of them throughout the intro and if I go over to this third player here, we have Normo. There is also the wave warp um, effect, and I used, I think, all of these as well, except for maybe smooth noise. I don't entirely know. Um, but the wave warp and turbulent displace, I kind of, it really suited that beat. And thus, that's what I went with. Um, it, it added to the intro, because if I turn off the wave warp and you just go through, um, or if I turn off the turbulent displace, it's just... There really isn't enough going on in the intro at all to make it very interesting. And, um, well, adding one little distortion effect really doesn't help that much. It's something. And it does add... It, it adds something to the intro. It gives something to pay attention to it it's another sync to another beat that's really all there is to it um, so now the other thing I'm gonna go over when we get to this fourth player here you'll notice uh, that it's actually delayed 
Um, so you'll see that this first part comes in. Um, it goes like boom, boom. So this first one is a cross dissolve like normal, but it is on 40% opacity and then you get the full opacity. Um, however, I, I forgot to mention this, but the player faces, just similar to the soft light for the cloud background, you have the overlay blend mode for the player heads. If I set this to soft light, it looks a little bit, you can see it better. Uh, I think overlay worked better because I didn't want the player heads to be too visible. I wanted them to be there, but I didn't want them, like, as much as the players are the focus of an intro, I didn't, I wanted it to, I liked how it blended into the background with overlay more than it did with, uh, that's what hard light looks like. I, I like, yeah, I, I like the difference between soft light and overlay, and I preferred overlay, so that's what I went with. Um, so yeah, uh, I just used the opacity trick to kind of fit the beats of the intro. Uh, it happens again here. Um, so that's that. And then the intro, it's relatively formulaic. There really isn't that much to it. Um, because it, I didn't have too much to work with. I had a player face and it's hard to really work with them in the same way that you can with renders. You can't really have them move up and down like you can to render, rotate them, or uh, scale them. I mean, sure, maybe I could scale them. But um, then it'd mess with the proportions of having them on the side and stuff like that. Uh, the next key thing in this intro happens right here, right around the halfway mark. So what you'll notice here is that I have a cross dissolve of 10 frames, and then we head into, it's the same background, but what happens here is that it flips sides. So if we have a horizontal flip, and then you'll also notice all these keyframes. I have a preset, Jarwage's Deadpool handheld camera presets, and I forget which one I used. Um, but this adds keyframes to shake the background. If you pay close enough attention, the background will shake. And I think that on this beat right here, there's a little bit of a violin that comes in in the background, and it, the drum also gets hit pretty hard. Like, it gets hit on all the player transitions between player faces. But on this one in particular, when the violin comes in, I wanted to accentuate that because that's an important beat. Um... So I did that by rotating it, and I also did that with the screen shake, and uh, it's also slightly scaled up. You'll see that it goes from 105 down to 100. There's also a slight rotation on it as well. Um, with the preset, though, sometimes it will create black bars on the edge, which um, I actually had to manually go through. I had to manually go through all these keyframes and make sure that there were no black bars, basically. So you'll see that these numbers at the end, they all get very close to the default, which is the 96548. So like 959.65, like within two positioning units over. So I, like, by the, like, over here, it's pretty far apart. Or, I mean, not super far, but there's still enough distance apart to see that there's movement going on. Um, and then the last part on this beat where the violin comes in, we, we have an adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer, if I zoom in, it is Lumetri Color SO Gold Western Universal, and there's actually two of them. Uh, there isn't anything with the motion of the opacity or anything like that. All this is if I, uh, you get Lumetri presets with Premiere, and um, if I go to Speed Looks Universal, uh, Cameras, it's in one of these. I, I don't remember which one. Um, I th it's in one of these Speedlux ones, I think. SL Gold Western Universal. Yeah, Th this one right here. And that just adds a more Western look to it. And what I did is I masked it, so it's comp it's off the screen at the start. Uh, but um, on the drop, it starts to go in from left to right. I would have tried to add a feather to it, but I don't think it entirely worked. There, there is a feather on it, but it's a little bit hard to notice it. Um, and what this does, this darkens the colors even more. So, um, yeah. I think that's about it. 
I don't, yeah, I didn't really do too much else with this intro. Um, I added this fire at the end. Kind of just as like a different uh, transition out. Um, as you'll see, I have the color key turned off right now. Uh, the color key allows you to green screen. And this fire effect, it's just a different transition instead of just a fade out. I figured I'd add something a little more creative to it. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this intro. So. Mm-hmm.